Okay, as usual, there's always a bit of modelling with these volumes of revolution question. Literally the same logic as before, so we're just going to dive straight in with this question that we've got. The diagram shows a model of a goldfish bowl, and the cross-section of the model is described by the curve with parametric equations x equals 2 sine t, x equals 2 sine t, I always like to have this written down at the bottom, and y equals 2 cos t plus 2. And interestingly, the values of t that we're allowed, the, the domain for t is between pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, where the units of x and y are in centimetres. And you can see this is the goldfish bowl that we've got here. The fact that we don't have all values of t is why we're having it starting at one point and finishing at another point. So my suspicion is that one of these is pi over 6 and one is 11 pi over 6, just because that's just the nature of parametric. They kind of flow around in an order, either that way or this way. The goldfish bowl is formed by rotating this curve about the y-axis to form a solid of revolution. Find the volume of water required to fill the model to a height of 3 centimetres that we've got here. So we're trying to now think about something up to a height of 3 centimetres. So I'm going to just add onto the diagram, this is going to be a height of 3 centimetres. And we're going to say, because it's about the y-axis, we know that our volume is usually going to be pi y squared dx, that's not true, pi x squared dy, y-axis means it has to end with the dy, but because we're doing parametric, it's going to be dy dt, dt, so there's a few different things we need to gather. We also need to gather these limits that we've got here. So I think we're talking about the y values are between 0 and 3, so I'm going to deal with the limits. If y is equal to 0, we would get 0 equals 2 cos t plus 2. So that is minus 2 over 2 is equal to cos t. In other words, cos t is minus 1. Now, cos is equal to minus 1 when t is equal to pi. So we now know that the bottom limit is going to be pi. So I might just do down here. This means reminds me the bottom one is going to be pi. Now, when y is equal to 3, because this is the y-axis here, we're just wanting to rotate this part of the curve. We're going to find out what the value of t is. So that's 3 equals 2 cos t plus 2. So I'll subtract the 2. I'll divide by the 2. And so cos t is equal to a half. Now there's a couple of different values that we could have here. It doesn't really matter which one we're going to be using. Um, but if I do the inverse cos of a half, the inverse cos of a half, you should know this, is either going to be pi over 3 or 2 pi minus that, which is 5 pi over 3. So these are the two different values that we've got here. Now the reason this is the case is because there's two areas where we could have pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So I think one of the things, it doesn't really matter what, which one we're going to use, but it probably will make sense to have the one on top as bigger. So we could use either. I'm just going to say here, we could use either of them. One of them is on this side, one of them is on this side. Either way, we'd either be rotating this curve or this curve, so we would still get the whole thing. I'm probably just going to do the one that to me makes more sense, which is to use the one that is bigger. So the reason I'm going to use the one that's bigger is just because it goes on top. Because it's trig, it's not really going to make a difference which ones we actually, which ones we need. Okay, so we're going to be, I prefer to do this one that's on this side. So I think that's probably the right one. Okay, now what we need to do is some of the other parts, which is to do the x squared. So x squared is going to be pretty simple, right? That's just going to be 4 sine squared t. And we also need to find out what dy dt is. So that's 2 cos t plus 2. That means that dy dt, so, um, cos differentiates to minus sine. So it's minus 2 sine t that we've got there. Okay, so now we can actually go straight in with the volume. So it is pi the integral between pi and 5 pi over 3 multiplied by these two things multiplied together, which is minus 8 sine cubed t. Now, if you had this as the pi over 3, I think we probably would end up with something that happens a little bit. I'm not going to do it with the pi over 3. This is perfectly fine. It would work with either. Now, I'm going to pull that minus 8 to the front, so we get minus 8 between pi and 5 pi over 3. And here comes the challenging part, is knowing how to integrate sine cubed. Now the trick for integrating sine cubed or cos cubed is this. You're going to take a sine and you're going to split it into a sine t and a sine squared t. 
sine squared t, we know is the same as 1 minus cos squared t. So we get sine t minus sine t cos squared t. That's really easy to integrate. This one is easy to integrate because we can focus on the cos squared t and thankfully there's a sine t that goes in front of it which means we can integrate it. Like I said, I'm not explaining full bits of integration here, so if you're confused, you need to go back and do some integration practice from regular maths. So that's going to leave me. I'm actually integrating minus 8 pi between pi and 5 pi over 3. I'm actually integrating sine t minus sine t cos squared t dt. Now I can actually do the integration. So minus cos t is going to differentiate to... Sorry, this integral of sine t is minus cos t that we've got there. This part, the derivative of cos is minus sine, and this is cos squared. So all I need to do is just increase that to cos cubed t and counter that 3 that I have from the power. Just think about how this would work. I have a third. I would pull the power down so it becomes just a 1. Great, and it's now a cos squared t. And I would also multiply by the derivative of cos t, which is minus sine t. So I know that I've got that bit there correctly. So that's between pi and 5 pi over 3. Now it's just a case of doing lots of substitution. So it's minus 8 pi multiplied by minus cos of 5 pi over 3 plus a third of cos cubed 5 pi over 3, and then I'm going to be subtracting this and this with pi subbed in, which means it's going to be plus cos pi minus a third cos cubed pi. Where's my calculator? Here's my calculator. So I'm going to very quickly just do some of this substitution, feeling very lazy, so I'm just going to do it all in my calculator, but I'll do a bit at a time just because that stops things going completely wrong. So I'll do the minus 5 pi over 3. If I do the cos of that, and I'm not in radians mode, bear with me, sorry guys. Okay, uh, cos of the answer, it's a half. So I'm just going to jot that down somewhere because it's going to make life a lot easier. So cos of 5 pi over 3 is equal to a half. Do you know why I didn't even need to do that on the calculator? I've actually got it written down somewhere here. I know that if t is 5 pi over 3, it's a half. So that was a bit of a waste of time of me to even get my calculator out. And I also know that cos pi is equal to minus 1. So I can do all of that as substitution. That's going to be minus a half for that part. A third multiplied by a half cubed plus cos pi, which is going to be plusing on minus 1. And I'm subtracting a third of minus 1 cubed. So that's minus 8 pi minus a half, plus um, a half cubed is an eighth, and an eighth times a third is 1 over 24. And then I'm going to do minus 1. Minus 1 cubed is minus 1, so it becomes plus a third. Now it just becomes a case of adding up all of those bits, those fractions. So it's minus 0 0.5, plus 1 over 24, minus 1, plus a third. And we get minus 1.125. What's that as a fraction? minus 9 over 8. So that's minus 8 pi multiplied by minus 9 over 8. So we just get 9 pi. So the answer to that whole thing was 9 pi. Now if we did do it with the pi over 3 on the top, you can see what would have happened because it would have made no difference because this is the same as the cos of pi over 3. So when we would have been subbing in pi over 3 and pi over 3 here, we still would have had the half and the half, so it would have been perfectly fine. I was kind of doubting myself. We could use either, and you'll see that it would give you that exact same answer. So let's just answer part B of the question, which says the real goldfish bowl has a maximum diameter of 48 centimetres. Find the volume of water required to fill the real goldfish bowl to the corresponding height that we've got here. Okay, so... We have modelled it all in centimetres like this, so it was 9 pi centimetres cubed. We're now going to have to think about what this diameter is according to the diagram, okay? Now you can think about this, about what's the maximum x direction that it could be. The maximum x direction that it can be, if it's 2 sine t, the maximum it could be has got to be 2, right? Because the maximum that sine t could be is 1. So this has got to be a 2. And the minimum it would be is minus 2. So this width that we've got here is simply going to be 
four on this part. So it was three centimeters and four centimeters originally, but actually the real goldfish bowl is 12 times wider than this. So I'm just gonna jot that down for part B. The real bowl has a diameter 12 times wider. So the scale factor is equal to 12, but our volume scale factor is therefore equal to 12 cubed. Remember that from GCSE, if you have the linear, the area, and the volume scale factor. So it's actually gonna be 12 cubed times bigger. So the volume of our bowl is going to be nine pi multiplied by 12 cubed. So on my calc, delete all, I haven't used this for a while, this graphics one. So I'm gonna do nine pi multiplied by 12 cubed. And let's write this as a decimal. That is four, eight, eight, five, eight. I've done that to the nearest one uh, centimeters cubed. I'll do it to three significant figures, which is four, eight, nine, zero, zero centimeters cubed. It's worth noting that a centimeter cubed is the same as a milliliter. So I could say that this is four, eight, nine, zero, zero milliliters, or I could say that it's 48.9 liters. And that seems pretty reasonable. If you think about something that's half a meter wide, a goldfish bowl that's half a meter wide, that's a huge bowl, 48.9 liters seems reasonable. If you had something that was like in the thousands, you'd have to kind of rethink your answer there. So that's everything from chapter four, Volumes of Revolution. Um, you can also go and have a look in my Bison Maths Google Drive because there's loads of exam questions to go with this. But really, it's just an opportunity to practice a lot of integration um, and it will probably pop up somewhere in your exam paper as an opportunity for them to make sure that you can do all of those integration bits that come up across CP2. So well done for sticking through this and I will hopefully see you in another video soon.